Uh, hello, my name is uh, Simeon uh, and I'm a 3D artist at uh, Chaos Group. Uh, I'm going to show you um, the newest features in uh, Viri RT. This is our real-time um, render. Um, it comes in two, uh, with two engines. Um, it supports CPU rendering and GPU rendering so that you can utilize the power of uh, your GPU card. Um, so we have, we have uh, the choice to, to use the CPU, the OpenCL, which supports both NVIDIA and uh, AMD cards as well as uh, processors. And we have the CUDA native support so that you can use uh, NVIDIA cards uh, out of the box with native support. So um, Our next presentation will be th there are some, the there are some uh, settings here that uh, allow you to get faster feedback for the preview, but um, I'm going to set up a couple of these just in order to speed up the rendering. Um, so let me go ahead and start rendering. So we see that we have to, uh, we can see this 1.5 million polygons uh, Lamborghini. Um, we, uh, I have set it up with uh, several, several layered shaders one on top of each other. So, and we have 4K textures. Uh, all of this get, uh, has to be loaded into the memory of the graphics card. So once it gets loaded, we start rendering and you see that uh, we have now immediate feedback from the rendering. As I rotate uh, my camera or position my lights, we get the immediate feedback of what, uh, what the rendering would be. So say I want to put it real back there, we can see in just a, in just a second the reflections are gone and basically whatever you need. So I'll put it back and take a look, let's, let's have a look at the shader. So let me position this a little bit, better, a little bit closer. Um, here are the shader of the car is I have it I have it over here over here we have a blend material which uh, allows us to layer several materials one on top of each other and here I have my ba base material which is just a plain grain material and if you want to take a look at that I'll just uh, reduce the coat layer so this is just the contribution of the base layer um, here I have set up another material and this is a standard V-ray material, uh, not that one, that one. Uh, it, has, it has just a diffuse color uh, texture and uh, a little bit of reflection in it, so we have these nice cool reflections. Uh, one, one thing I should uh, point out is that we, we use uh, a Fresnel option here, which is uh, the way the proper reflection uh, behaves. So if we take a look at the texture, this is a very Fresnel texture, which uh, basically blends between the two colors depending on the view camera uh, angle and uh, index of refraction. So if I were to go and put a higher number here, it will behave more like, a, more like a plastic and we will see more of the side color contribution. So if I change that to red, we have a blend between the red and the green uh, with more red appearing over here. <laughs> at the side of the car. If I turn it back lower, we'll see much more of the this type, chameleon type effect. Um, so, really cool, really, really interesting. Um, so, if I were to go and assign um, a procedural material over that one, uh, um, a procedural texture, um, here this material is just with the diffuse color and uh, in the diffuse color I have put the uh, uh, Maya ramp so you can see we support uh, procedural uh, textures and but this is not very interesting so what I'm go going to do is uh, I have prepared this texture and I'm going to use it as a blend amount for not for that I'm sorry for the for this ma material with a with a gradient ramp and now we can see this cool type vinyl effect uh, going on over our uh, shader with the reflections on coat of it. So basically now I have one, two, three layers one on top of each other and if I want to go uh, all, support mask, all support masking 
and uh, we have uh, uh, additional special features, uh, additive mode, which uh, breaks the conservation laws and it can, uh, it, it can well, it's like uh, Photoshop blending uh, in F plus mode, adding, adding one on top of each other. Of course, this is, this is uh, not, uh, um, it will break the law for conservation of energy, so more light will, ref will be reflected more than it's uh, received, so this is for special special cases. But you have this control. Uh, if, and if I were to go and uh, uh, put my my topmost material, which is a classic black shade, uh, classic black paint for a studio setup, you know, a magazine cover. Of course I can blend uh, midway in between, so a little bit of black, a little bit of this color, a little bit of the gray, so you have total amount of, uh, total control of the amount of blending between. So, this is, um, this is cool, this is uh, one thing I should point out is we have um, uh, CAD CAD mod model, CAD data, uh, so you can see it behaves properly with uh, triangles and uh, uh, quads, of course. Uh, so this is 1.5 million polygons and uh, three uh, triangles, actually 2.3 million triangles and 4K textures. So let me show you another scene. Another example is um, if I take a look at this, of this robot. We have a nice robot with a little animation, it jumps. Uh, I have a dome light set up here, uh, the, the dome light is our uh, uh, image based lightning solution and um, it's uh, really fast and really efficient, gives you uh, nice sharp shadows with only one dome light and uh, proper GI uh, and uh, the sampling is incredible, it, it evaluates um, where, where to sample more and where to sample less so that you get uh, the, 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 the right shadows from your HDR uh, and the best shadows out of your HDR. Uh, what we have here is, uh, let me check if I'm running at, R, at the GPU, yes. Uh, if you have a smaller amount of uh, memory in your graphics card, you can, you can reduce the texture size by enabling this and, and specifying how much to reduce it so that uh, you can load all, all of your uh, textures in the memory of your graphics card. Um, I'm running a Quadro here, which has 4 gigs of RAM, but if you have less, you can use this op these options. Um, I'm here the, the resolution is twice as large. I'm looking at 50%, so let me enlarge this. So here is our robot. robot. If I go and rotate my camera, of course we have the ch we see the changes in effect. So this shader here is just uh, it's just a little bit uh, green and white. So it's not that interesting. So let me go ahead and um, take the material of this thing. It's again I have a blend material and another blend material inside of it, so we can stack blending material, blend materials one, one inside of other, so we practically have unlimited uh, amount of layers. And um, here, I'm sorry, here I can, I can just increase the opacity of this, uh, this ramp. Actually, I have plugged in just a red, green, and uh, blue ramp inside of it, and Though it may look cool, it's a little bit plastic and a little bit toyish. So what would be more interesting if uh, I can again go ahead and uh, plug a texture to blend the two colors. And when I do that, once the texture gets loaded into the RAM, we should wait. It's a 4K. Uh, here, here actually we have 7K textures. So, uh, but we're rescaling them anyway. However, we see this uh, distorted uh, paint effect that I painted, and this is just a mask for the blending of the layers. So really, really cool, really nice. We can see its face looking toward it. Re um, everything works with reflections, refractions, glossy reflections, glossy refractions, translucency. You have uh, all this amount. Um, right at your fingertips. 
So, and if you wait a little bit more, if you have the time, and uh, but by uh, if you have the time, I mean a couple of seconds, probably one minute, uh, the noise is uh, constantly getting refined, and you see a better, better uh, uh, image. Um, what's more, this is this is our V-Ray RT engine, and this is uh, supposed to be. Uh, it is intended to be uh, like a preview and setup render. Uh, although you you may you may get a high quality uh, final uh, result um, rendering by leaving it render for say for five five minutes at the top. Um, you can you can uh, you just. Its, it's idea is to, to go and set up your rendering, <coughs> <coughs> set up your camera, set up your lights, materials, shaders. Uh, we support as well depth of field and motion blur inside of this uh, in the RG, so that when, once you're ready with, with this, and it gives you almost instantly uh, feedback, once you're ready with this and say, okay, this is the place, this is the starting point I want to go, you just stop it and start production render and uh, it will give you the same result as the RG. Actually the same. I'm sorry? Visually the same. Yes, virtually the same. Visually the same, absolutely. Um, there are several, several things are not supported in the RG and they require pre-passes. Uh, we do not support the subsurface cutter in the RG, but we support in the uh, production. And uh, the ambient occlusion also requires uh, uh, somewhat of a pre-pass. So not a pre-pass, but it, it, it requires additional calculations that are not included in the RG, but are available in the production render. Um, so so that's 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 great and uh, a lot of control. Um, what else? Uh, here is a really good um, production uh, product design example. Here we have this military watch. Uh, let me go ahead and render right away. And uh, the tricky part here is we have uh, lots of glossy metal, lots of sampling. Um, a lot of material objects, reflections, bouncing a lot, um, and, and uh, lots of samples bouncing around with uh, lots of trace depths. So not an easy task for a ray tracer, as you can see. And once you load the textures, we start rendering again really quickly. You get the feedback, and as you can see, in a matter of I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, you all already you already have have an idea what this was, where this is going. And when you wait, say about a minute to, you get almost perfect quality. Um, what's good is that you get you get alpha. Well, not expected. Um, you can set it, uh, set the, your mates correctly, and you will get uh, you get the proper alpha out of this. And uh, what's better, you can save out directly from the frame buffer. Um, uh, render elements are not uh, are not supported in the RG, but uh, again, uh, Viri RG is not uh, uh, RG is not meant for uh, final production render. So so just for pre purposes. So if you want uh, render elements, you should set it up in, uh, set them up in the production render. Uh, we is uh, always part of the main application. Yes, uh, VRA RT. VRA production will always have RT, right? Will we hope? Will always have the RT module, right? Yes, yes. VRA RT is uh, actually um, part of the VRA uh, 2.0 uh, packet, uh, package, and you you have um, uh, numerous service packs that uh, we release for free. So now we have service pack three with um, dispersion effect uh, in the material, so when you have refraction, you have uh, natural, physically accurate dispersion, you know, the rainbow effect uh, that appears when a lot of uh, uh, reflections appear, you see the rainbow, uh, especially good for jewels and this kind of um, uh, materials. Uh, you get lens effects uh, built in the frame buffer, so that you just turn them on and re-render and re-render, but the, this again works with the production render. But you have glare uh, and uh, bloom, bloom and glare uh, that are um, dependent on, you can take from image, from the render camera settings, or uh, from custom 
from custom camera parameters that you can specify here. So the glare and the uh, the, the glare radius is dependent on the f number and things like this. Uh, so these are you can you can think of them as a minor adjustment, but uh, they are physically based lens effects. So you don't have to fake anything, and it will be like just like 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 the real. You, of course, you can you can enhance the width and the strength of it if you want, but uh, they interactively help you set up your image right in the frame buffer here. Um, this is the built-in V-Ray frame buffer, and it gives you a, a lot of control over um, over how your image or your rendered image looks like. You have uh, exposure. Uh, uh, this is a full flow 32 bit view, uh, frame buffer, so you can control the exposure uh, as much as you like. Directly save it out as EXR on experience, right? Yes, you don't have to save the EXR and go into another uh, program to see, uh, to see this, this, this type of effects. Of course, you have levels uh, that you have to enable. Levels, uh, color correcting curves. How long has that work out of the blue? So it's like like a mini photo editing program inside of the V-Ray, so that you do not have to jump around through packages, and you can set up really quickly what you whatever you want to do. Uh, the V-Ray the V-Ray frame buffer uh, shows you shows you all the render elements if you render in production. Uh, when you render with production render, um, all the render elements are available while the bucket goes I, 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 while the bucket goes rendering. Um, so actually, let me try. I can probably render out a, render out a production render out of this. So when we start uh, production, we. After a couple of seconds, we start rendering. Uh, this is our indirect illumination pass, and here is a cool feature: if if you turn it on, um, the render buckets follow your cursor, so you can you can render exactly where you want. Of course, we support region render region rendering as well, but this is a really neat feature if you want to to just see this part of the image, yeah, first. And as you can see now, we have um, noise-free, no noise at all because we have set, I have set up the production render at a reasonable quality. Of course, we take a little bit of time, but that's uh, how a ray tracer works. And here we have carbon, anisotropy, uh, <laughs> you, you name it. So good anti-aliasing and I would say a magazine photo, magazine cover photo. Uh, well, I think that will be all, all for my presentation for today. And just a.